Thank you for staying on Joy News Desk. Let's do some other stories now. The use of plastic and other forms of waste to generate energy, though recent, promises to be a reliable option for effective waste management. The method, however, is expensive and time-consuming as it involves sorting in various material base before processing. A group of students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology are exploring ways of generating energy without separating waste. Kwesi Debra reports. Conversion of waste into fuel is a recent but efficient technology of waste management. But the problem has to do with the sorting out of the waste, which is, of course, very expensive and time consuming. But some students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology want me to tell you that when you get your waste and you want to convert into fuel, don't waste your time trying to sort them out. What you have to do is to bring it to them and they'll convert everything into energy. The process known as pyrolysis involves burning plastic and plant or animal parts in temperature range of 200 to 760 degrees Celsius. The process produces gas and sometimes liquid products leaving solid residue. Pyrolysis differs from high temperature processes like combustion as it does not involve oxygen or air. With cool pyrolysis, there is no sorting of waste before processing. The team spent months to build a prototype cool pyrolysis reactor. The waste is first dried as water interferes with the efficiency of the process. The pre-treated waste is introduced into the reactor, equipped with an airlock which keeps oxygen and unwanted air out of the reactor. Fire heats up the reactor and indirectly heats up the waste. The reaction produces gases which pass through the tube. They are then cooled with cold water. Biofuel, which can be mixed with diesel, is a product of pyrolysis. The process produces a gas known as sine gas used to generate electricity. Biochar, a type of charcoal, remains a residue which can be used to improve yeah, soil fertility. Members who call themselves Greenfire believe it is the solution to Ghana's waste management problems. Jonas Yabwa is the team leader. People have started building technologies that can convert only biomass into fuel and only plastics into fuel. But our idea of co-pyrolysis is to convert both plastics and biomass into fuel. The innovative part of our reactor is that we have added the technology of converting both plastics and biomass in order to get our fuel. Our fuel can be used in diesel engines and also can be used as a blend stock in cars to fuel our cars. They are working with the Technology Consultancy Center of the university. When this work is done, it's a prototype and it needs to be improved for commercialization. So what is going to happen next is that we will engage students on it. Reporting for Joy News, Chrissy Debra. Now, former Attorney General Martin Amidu will no longer be party in a case in which a private legal practitioner is seeking to stop the oral examination of businessman Alfred Woyome on the whereabouts of the 51 million CD judgment debt paid him by the state. The highly anticipated oral examination was suspended following the action by David Ametefe, who wants the Supreme Court to determine whether the judge who granted the relief to Mr. Amidu, Justice Eninia Boa had the power to do so. The former Attorney General had gone to court to question the locus of the private legal practitioner in his attempt to scuttle his oral examination of Mr. Woyome. There's more in this report. The matter the court set out to determine was whether private legal practitioner David Amethefe had the capacity to initiate the action as well as the propriety of the means used. 
the legal practitioner went to court following a decision by Justice Eni Nyeboa, sitting as a sole judge, to allow the former Attorney General Martin Amidu to orally examine businessman Alfred Williamen. He had wanted an interpretation on the extent to which a single justice of the court can act as well as an order from the court to halt the planned oral examination. Martin Amidu raised an initial objection, questioning David Amethyfe's capacity. Justice Sophia Kufu, reading the judgment of the seven-member panel, said David Amethyfe had appropriately invoked the jurisdiction of the court. The panel, however, disagreed with him on those listed as defendants. The court held that Martin Amidu does not qualify to be a defendant in the suit. A cost of 5,000 cities was awarded against David Amethyfe. And now let's talk about Parliament's Appointments Committee and who is likely to appear for vetting. Today, Transport Minister Kweku Ofori Isiyama, Environment, Science and Technology Minister-designate Professor Kwabna Frimpong Boating, Railways Development and Minister-designate Joe Gatte. Now, these three persons are expected to appear before Parliament's Appointments Committee. And uh, when proceedings begin, we'll take you live uh, to get a feel of what uh, those various vetting sessions will actually be. But uh, that will be all for this edition of Joy News Desk. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. You can also follow us on social media on Facebook and Twitter. We are Joy News on TV. Up next is Joy News Interactive, where you get to have your say on the most topical issues of the day. My name is Ben Abubedi. See you later at 12. I'll be back with more news.